Hi guys and welcome to this video. This is Jamie from System22 and GreatWebDesign.com. We're going to continue on with our one page bootstrap scrolling website build here. Uh, we're going to move on down and start styling our contact section. Now what I've got in mind here is we'll have a few details over on this side with our address, telephone number and email. Then we'll have a contact form here asking for an email address, a subject and a text field to put their message and obviously a send button. And I think we'll use that nice red color we've been using for the background section here. This may be quite long this video, so I apologize in advance. What we're going to do, we'll set up the form and everything. It'll work in Bootstrap offline here, but you've got to remember this will not work. It will not send an email until we a add a PHP form to make it send and B upload it to an online server because PHP is a live script and it, it won't work on your local machine here. So in this video, we're just going to actually create the, the section itself. And once we've finished off the site, we'll add the PHP form to make it send. And I'll show you how to do that when we upload it to a live server and get it working. First thing we're going to want to do is go to our folder and open up our index HTML document, which is what we're looking at here in our bracket software. As I say every time, brackets is a free, this program here, brackets is a free text editing software program. And uh, you can download it from the free link below this video here. And also let's open up our CSS file for styling our site. We're working on the scrolling nav one here. So if I just right click on that and open with brackets also. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is exactly what we've done in the last few videos is find our contact section. There it is. Now we want to cut it out of the head here. So I'm going to select all of that and hit control X or you can right click and just hit cut if you want to. I'll just tidy that up and zoom down the bottom and start a new section. We'll give it a title as usual. Contact section. And we'll paste that bit of CSS code that we just cut just now there. Now I'm going to remove the height attribute there because that's telling it to be the height of the whatever the screen size is you're viewing it on. Um, and I'm also going to because I know this I know I'm going to want this is the padding I've got at the top 150 picks. I want a similar one at the bottom so that both top and bottom have the same padding. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that. And change that to bottom. OK, uh, text align that can stay the same. Now I want to use that nice red color we've been using, which was I think EE something. Oh, I'm sure it's up here somewhere. 2B, 2B was the gray. There it is, I'm sure. Yeah, that's it. Fine. Let's just copy this color. I've got a list of this color in a notepad. I just didn't have it up. OK, let's put that there. And save that. OK, um, now if we go to our index HTML document, we've actually got our contact section here. This is one we keep copying over and using and using and using. Um, so let's change the title to contact us. And as previously, because I'm using that red background, I'm going to give it the class of um, heading white. I think it was we, we'd been doing, if I just show you here, we had several different classes going on. We've got, a, I think that's the heading white. It'll give it that nice underline 
underneath. So let's give it the class of heading white. Okay, that should do it. Um, it's a row, that's fine, that's fine. Let's just take a quick look. Now this this section should have a, a red background now and the title should be white with an underline underneath it. Let's just make sure we save it, Control S. And it'll be short, it'll only be so long because we'll have 150 at the top, 150 at the bottom. So let's refresh and see if it does that. Yep, there we go. Um, so we've got that title right where we want it. Next thing I want to do is I want to create a little section here. I'm going to have two sections here. This is going to have the address details and the contact form on this side. So I think I'll split it into perhaps four and eight um, because as we've explained before, these bootstraps, it's it. this section, this whole row here is, is made up of 12 sections. So when you split it up, you want to make it equal 12. So I'm going to have 4 and 8, because 4 and 8 is 12. So it should be a smaller section on the left there and a larger section on the right. So let's get that done. Back to our brackets. So what I'm going to do is, within this row here, I think I know actually I'm going to I'm going to do a whole new row actually. Let's let's do that. That'll be easier. So I'll just copy that and we'll drop down. And what I'm going to say this is going to be a row and within it I'm going to have our column large 4 which will be the left hand column. And I'm going to copy this again. And I'm going to keep it within this row div right here. Keep it in within these so it'll be on the same row, obviously, funnily enough. And we'll make this one 8. And in our first one, it's going to have our address and what have you. So I'm actually going to put another div in here. So in our first column here, I'm going to add another div and I'm going to give it the class of address because this is where we're going to put the address. So let's create another div and give it the class of address. Close it out. And in, in here we're going to insert our address. And this one here this is where we're going to put the form in a minute. We'll do that in just a second. Let's get our address going here. And let's use some H3s. Because so I think H2s will probably be too big. H stands for heading. The higher the number, the smaller the font. Obviously, we can add CSS to make the font whatever we want. Um, so the name of the business, we'll call it one page site. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this several times and fill in the details as we go along. I may need one more, or I may not, I don't know. Uh, let's give it an address, doesn't matter what. We'll just call this Photo Road. And we'll give it the Empire States address here. New York and that's going to be NY because they named it twice apparently and uh, zip for New York is uh, 10118 it's just that I've got the address of the uh, the Empire State building up in a in a panel next door and let's give them our phone number Uh, 
and let's copy that let's just give them an email as well even though we've got uh, even though we've got um, a form next door or will have once we've put it in there okay that's looking all right let's just save that it's not going to look particularly interesting but we'll style it up dress so quick save back to the site let's take a look at what we've got hopefully it should appear down here there it is okay I seem to have two headings there oh I know that's what because <laughs> that's that is right here in the form section so let's just get rid of that from where I copied it over before okay now we need to start styling this I think the text size is okay um, but I want to make it white I think we want it left aligned don't want it center aligned like that so it's real easy to do we gave that div the class of address yeah we gave it class of address so it's just dot address h3 and we'll make it left and we'll also make the text white left aligned let's go back back to our html i can actually just do that here i believe i can just add the attribute of text left and that'll make all that text go left so now all that should be left aligned we'll just check that quick save back to the site refresh and the text should be left now yep that's more like it because we'll have the text on the left and our form on the right here and we want that to be white so I could put an inline style but it's better practice to do it this way around so let's drop down in our CSS right here scrolling now CSS bit of space address that was the class I want to spell it right because it will not work if you do not spell things right address and uh, it was the h3 tags wasn't it h3 and open and close some curly brackets drop them down and in between all we want to do is put color white which is f -f -f -f. three f's as you all know by now it's actually six f's but uh, with css3 you only have to put three if they're all the same quick save control s back to our site and refresh hopefully that text should have changed to white now there we go that's it okay let's create our form over here and bootstrap's great it comes with a some JavaScript ready forms but as I say it doesn't have the live script the PHP to actually make it send when you're online and we'll do that when we upload to the a live server in a future video okay so let's go back to our HTML and start building our form now this is gonna want to be inside this one here which should be column 8 not column 4 and we'll start a new div we'll call it contact form close out that div drop him down 
There's a bit of space in between. Let's just keep this tidy. Okay, and I'm going to put some stuff in here that won't make sense at the moment, but it is essential when I come to add that PHP form later on. And I need to put in another div class for, I don't know if you've noticed when you send a form on a site, you usually get a success message. And so we, we need to put in a little div for that and have it hidden. Um, so I'm going to put this in here. This will all make sense later on when we actually make this form live. And I'm going to call it a status alert, alert success. And what we want to do, like I say, this doesn't make any sense at the moment, I'm sure to you, but we want it to, I'm going to do some inline style here. We've got to say display none because we don't want it to appear. We only want it to actually appear when you hit that send button. And that will close, we'll close out our div there. That should do it for that. Like I say, this is pretty irrelevant for this particular video right here, but we will need it later on. So let's start building our form if we drop down one more. And let's uh, just tab across, keep it uh, tidy. Now we're going to make a form and it's going to have an ID and we'll call it contact form. Funnily enough, as it's a contact form. And we're going to give it the class of contact. Again, keep it simple <laughs> so we know what everything is. It's a contact form. Let's call it contact. Now, it's got to have a name as well. And again, I think we'll give it the same as the ID, which is contact form, which should work quite well. And the reason it's got to have all these things this may not be obvious right now, but when I add the PHP form, just to re-edit, I'll show you. I've got one here. Um, this is a PHP form that we're going to use when we make this live. There's no point at the moment until we upload it to a live server. And we have to have these names and things in here because it won't hook up to this form otherwise. So this is the reason that, that I'm adding the, some of these things here that don't make sense at the moment. And forms have to have a method. And the method is post. And the action, which is the real biggie, because this, the action is tells it what, what it's got to do. And the thing it's got to do is hook up with this PHP form that we're going to put in in a few videos time. And that will actually enable it to send. And that PHP form I've called send mail .php because it's a PHP form. And so that tells it it's got to hit that form and run that form and it'll make everything work in theory no I'm kidding it will it should work fine okay so let's close out that form there and we'll drop that down because now we need to start putting in our fields let's just tidy that up and you know bootstrap like I said before is pretty good it, it's got all these things that you can build these things really quickly. Now, we just need to do a div and give it a class for a change. And the class we're going to use is form group because this is our text areas and input boxes and what have you. I'll 
I'll just close that out. And we'll do a bit of cheating in a minute. Well, not really cheating, but we'll copy a bunch of stuff over. Then it makes it'll make this run a little quicker. And our first input type here. I'm all for saving time. And our first input type here is is going to be a text because we're going to ask them for. Um, well, actually, no. Let's ask them for their email first, I suppose. So it's input type. And this is, you see, it's got all these. You can have a checkbox, date, picker, the color if you want them to select a color, date and time, date, time, local, email, file if they want to upload a file, hidden image, blah, 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 blah. I want the email. And what that effectively does is it, it creates a box that if they don't put in the at sign and adopt something after it, it'll error out. So you've got to get a legitimate email. Of course, it's not going to stop people putting in junk emails, but they have to put an at sign and adopt something or else it will not work. OK, so sorry, I got off track there, class. It's form control. And because it's an email, it's a mail field. Now, do we want it to be required? I think so. That way you can collect people's emails and addresses if, if uh, that's your thing. Anybody that does any form of online marketing or anything like that, collecting email addresses is absolutely essential. Now we'll put a placeholder there. And what a placeholder is, it's that text that you see inside a mailbox. I'll show you in just a moment when we finish this and explain everything. And this is where you, you can put what you want it to say there. So we'll say your email address. Well, your email will do fine, I'm sure. That's fine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to. Okay, something's gone wrong here. We've got a flag. Oh, I haven't, I haven't bracketed it out there. There we go. I've got to make sure I put that end tag on there. Okay, I'm going to copy this a couple of times because we're going to want their email address. Then we want a text field that says the subject. And then, of course, we'll actually want the message area. And after that, we're going to need to add a button. So all we need to do, we need to change a few of these. The second one is for their subject line. So this is a text. And we'll give it the name of subject. Just looking at this, I could have sworn we need to put a name in there. Okay. Make sure I've got a gap between those attributes there. Sorry, I forgot to put the name in there and we'll have to do that. Let's just copy this. I want to be before that class attribute there. There we go, got an extra gap in there. Okay. And this wants to be a subject. And again, these names all correlate to this uh, email form here, PHP form. OK. And form control, yes. We don't need that mail field because that's for the email address. Required, yep, we want it required. And we'll have it subject. Subject. 
and on the next one this one wants to be the actual text area where they where they type in their message so it's just text area and text area has no spaces and the name is message ID or the name is message I should say and it's got an ID we've got to give it an ID of message and for those of you that have been following on don't worry too much about uh, following along with all this this coding I will put a PDF of the HTML and CSS that we use it will be downloadable for you below this video here so we've got ID we've got message do we want to keep it required it's not a mail field there we'll keep it required I'm gonna put that form control I'm gonna just cut that and put that after the required there control and the placeholder obviously for this is going to be message okay your message now with the text areas we want to uh, give them a, a bunch of rows uh, you know how, how deep do you actually want it and to do that we're going to give it an extra class of rows and that's going to equal say eight if you want more make it more if you want less make it less but eight's pretty standard for these sort of things looks like I've got an extra gap in there let's just tidy that up that should just about in our text area right there so we've got to close the text area it's a bit like a div so you want to that's it it's done it for us that's fine text area now we want another div let's just copy this for saving time yet again but um, and this is just going to be for the the button itself to actually send the message so again it's form group which we've got there already and let's get rid of all this text area business and start from scratch with this one and it's going to be a button so it's a button type well it's going to be button and then type it's got to be a submit button and for the style of it I'm going to use one that we've we've used already in our site which is the button dark because that should work nicely against our red background there so we call it class and button button dark and the button dark just in case you can't remember is this that's a button dark right there and I think on that red background that should look fairly catching or eye catching down there so back to our code now what do we want it to say I think just have it say send that's a little boring let's say reach out obviously you put in whatever you want to put in there is fine and it's closed our button out for us there that's great okay let's close that so let's just tidy up that little gap there form is closing the div that's got its own thing I'm going to take this back a bit because we've got an extra gap there not that it really matters I'm just trying to keep things tidy here let's save that and take a look see what it looks like it should have three fields now and a submit button on the bottom if we've done it correctly let's have a look 
Let's refresh this site. Our form should appear here. Appear here. Say that three times. And it should have an email, subject, text area, and a button. So let's refresh and see what happens. There we go. Okay, that was exactly what we wanted. And as you can see, this form does actually work. You can input stuff. And you can hit send and it will give us a JavaScript error saying that you know we haven't filled out this form so it's working as it should but it's not a live form as such yet until we add that PHP that I was talking about earlier on and we'll save that for another video because this is going to be too long otherwise it's already 30 minutes long um, so let's just drop this down a little bit so it's in line with that and that's the contact I think let's just inspect I think it's just called contact that little div right there I'll go a bit further down form group yeah that class you see it says contact right there so I'm gonna give it padding of 20 pixels on top Go to our CSS. And the class was contact as, as we saw, so it's dot contact. And I want padding top of say about 20 pixels. Let's see, see how that works. I could have tried it live on there, but quick save back to the site that's more like it they're more in line now like that that's fine so I think we'll leave it there for this particular video um, could add some icons just to make it a little more interesting let's do that we'll do that in the next video so uh, there you go that's how to add a contact section to our one page scrolling site once again this has been jamie from system 22 and greatwebdesign.com if you've enjoyed this video please subscribe to our youtube channel if you're interested in building websites take one of our courses below there's some great uh, uh, 90 percent off coupons for our courses there there's bootstrap course where you can learn how to edit bootstrap templates and create sites very quickly and there's a couple of wordpress courses ones uh, for an e-commerce store and ones how to develop wordpress sites on your home local computer so if you're interested in that please click on the links and take them thanks for watching have a great day